Some elements on web pages have similar styles, like the font size and color in the bottom two sections of this page. But elements may also have many style differences, distinct colors, and unique layouts. To style any element, we first need to select it for styling. That's the purpose of a CSS selector. We want to select this element and put a border around it. We want to select this element and format it as a table with alternate row coloring. Let's review the syntax of a style declaration. First is the selector. It identifies the elements that the browser selects for styling. The selector can be very flexible in how it selects elements. Then we declare the styling rules. Each rule has a CSS property and value pair detailing how the selected element should be styled. By convention, we put each property and its value on its own line, indented under the selector. And we need the appropriate punctuation. The style rules for a selector are defined within curly braces. We use a colon to separate the CSS property from its value. And we end each property and value pair with a semicolon. In this clip, we walk through the universal selector. We cover additional selectors in the next clips. The asterisk defines a universal selector matching all elements. Use this selector to style every element on the page. The universal selector is useful for resetting all elements, overriding any browser default values. That way, we can start with a blank slate of sorts before applying our own custom styles. For example, we may want to reset all elements to zero margin. Want to give it a try? Let's jump back to the code and implement a universal selector. We are in VS Code with the resume folder open. Click Explorer to view the files and double click to open both our style sheet and our HTML file. We'll close Explorer for more room. Then click Go Live to bring up the page in the browser. Let's rearrange the window so we can see our style sheet and the browser. In the browser, notice the margin at the top and sides of the page. We aren't specifying that margin anywhere here in our style sheet. That margin is coming from the browser's default style sheet. We can get rid of the browser's default styles using the universal selector. We normally add the universal selector at the top of the style.css file, type an asterisk, and curly braces for the style declaration. Then we'll reset the margin to zero. Wow, look at what that did to our display. No wonder the browser provides some defaults for us. By resetting the default styles, we control exact margins, placement, or other layout. And we don't have to wonder if some of the settings are coming from the browser's default style sheet. Let's add a comment for later reference. In a style sheet, the comment syntax begins with a slash and an asterisk, then our comment, and it ends with an asterisk and a slash. Feel free to add comments to your style sheet as you wish. Now let's leave our editor layout as it is and go back to the slides. So, a selector identifies which elements to select for styling. Use an asterisk for the universal selector. The universal selector selects all elements on the page. Next up, let's look at type selectors. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.